Finding the fifth sage is one of the most obscure needles in a giant haystack. That is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Luckily for you, I've got your back and I'll show you exactly where to find the fifth sage and how to beat the corresponding spirit temple. Welcome back everyone, it's Abdali here with another awesome tips and tricks tutorial video for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Today's video is all about that fifth sage, and trust me, when I was playing this game blind, I spent a long, long time looking around the entire overworld to find this fifth sage, and I accidentally stumbled upon it, and I just want to make sure I save you time. So, what we're going to be doing on today's episode is we're going to give you the lead up of how to get the fifth sage, we're going to show you all of the puzzles involved with the fifth sage, and then we're going to show you how to beat the spirit temple. It's a very action-packed episode, so thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoy the video and it helped you out, be sure to smash that like button and share the video with a friend. We've got tons more tips and tricks tutorials, so stay subscribed in order to be updated on the latest and greatest. Let's jump into it. Before starting your quest to find the fifth sage, ensure that you have at least nine total hearts and enough cooked meals to replenish your stamina. In order to start off your quest to find the fifth sage, you'll need to get high into the sky as close to the southern thunderstorm as possible. So jump all the way up from the Poplar Foothills Skyview Tower and land on a nearby floating rock. The spacing is a little tough, but make yourself a flying wing with a cart, a wing, a fan, and a steering stick and then aim it towards the thundercloud. If you don't have enough battery charge, use the Zonai charges in your inventory to refill the battery accordingly. Once you're inside the thundercloud, all of your metallic weapons, bows, and shields will become attracted to the lightning, so open up the menu and unequip all of those. Navigate your way through the cloud as best as you can while keeping up with your battery life. Definitely try not to run into any of the floating islands inside. If you keep moving forward, your wing will eventually despawn, forcing you to glide the rest of the way. Recharge your stamina if you need to by eating a meal. You'll eventually land on Dragonhead Island and have to navigate through the limited visibility towards the Joku-U Shrine. Directly outside that shrine, you'll see a wall of branches that you can light on fire to pass through. There will be a big door for you to open, so press A on it to test your total amount of hearts, similar to the very beginning of the game's Temple of Time door. This door requires 9 total hearts, so if you didn't do enough shrines and upgrade your hearts, you won't be able to make it past here. After opening the door, you'll come across a mysterious mass that will fire a green beam of light diagonally downwards towards the surface of Hyrule. Grab the mask with the Ultra Hand and bring it to the supply cache to the right. Replicate a flying vehicle with a fan and a steering stick, just like earlier, and attach the mask to the front of it. Then launch yourself towards the green light spot on the surface. Upon landing, you'll notice that the green beam of light points to a small pedestal, so place the mask directly on top of it in order to open the path forward. Bring the mask with you as you make your way through Tobio's Hollow Chasm. Place the mask on another pedestal and you'll now be on an elevator, lowering into the underground depths. When you land in the construct factory, take the mask and place it all the way forward into the circular mold in order to wake up Minoru, who's the fifth sage without a body. She'll explain to you that you'll need to visit the four storehouses and obtain the missing arms and legs of her body. Directly to the south of the construct factory is the Mokuij light route. Head over there and activate it in order to light up the area for better visibility. Head west of the light route in order to find the left leg depot. Activate the green glowing hand pad and you'll notice that the left leg is encased in a rectangular container and it's up to you to bring it out of the depot by solving the puzzle. Place the leg on the elevator and activate the rocket to launch it upwards to the next level. When you're there, attach a 45 degree angled upward rocket to the top of the rectangle and head towards a small platform near the turn wheel. Place the rocket facing the giant opening in the wall and run all the way to the other side to catch it with Ultra Hand just in case it doesn't make it. Fire an arrow to activate the rocket and watch as the leg gets delivered pretty easily. Now make your way back to Minoru with the left leg in hand and place it right in front of her body to break open the container and align the left leg perfectly in its mold. Head southwest from the light route to find the left arm depot. Activate the glowing green hand pad and find the left arm encased in another rectangle. Attach two forward facing big wheels on each side of the rectangle and align it on the lava so that you can hitch a ride on top of it when you activate the wheels. 
Once you make it across, take the wheels off and rotate the rectangle 90 degrees so that it's wide enough to fit the wheels across the lava. Take a wheel off and attach it to the right side of the rising door and then attach the stone end of the chain to the rotating wheel to crank up the door just enough to squeeze past. As soon as you're through the doorway, put the rectangle on the water and follow the waterway all the way down to the construct factory. Drop it in front of Minoru and rotate the left arm into place. Head west of the light route and make your way to the right arm depot by lighting up the way with bright bloom seeds and ascending when you're under a rock structure. This depot will teach you all about using mini wheels, so grab the rectangle and place it on the conveyor belt upwards. Over here you'll notice that the floor is electrified and you'll need to place mini wheels on the rectangle in order to ride it across. Pay attention to the orientation of the wheels as they only move in one direction, and it'll be a lot easier to build the three-wheeled vehicle upside down and then turn it upright when all the wheels are attached. Place the rectangle on top of the electric pillar and activate the wheels to make it across. Take a look in the corner of the room and you'll find a steer stick, so attach it to your vehicle to ride down the Gloom Lake, past Gloom enemies right in front of Minoru. Place the right arm in the mold and make your way over to the final piece. Head northeast from Minoru to find a huge bone to climb up. Keep using your bright bloom seeds to light the way forward. You'll eventually make it to the UC Code's light route, so activate that and continue forward. You'll then see an area with Gloom Aracudas, so make your way under them and glide down to the right leg depot. Activate the glowing green hand pad and grab the rectangle in front of you and head towards the next room. You'll see a single winding railway, so grab the rectangle and glue the C-shaped block on the side of it and add a fan to the back so it can propel its way up the railing without being blocked by the stoppers along the way. Bring the rectangle up the elevator by activating the fans, then make your way to the right of the room to find a wing and a steering stick. Put the rectangle on top of the wing and the steering stick on top of the rectangle and a fan on the back. When you're ready, launch yourself towards Minoru or take a detour to the top of the construct factory to claim a bunch of pose. Crack open the rectangle and place the final leg in the mold to unlock Minoru. Now you're on the quest to find her secret stone, so climb up on her back towards the supply cache to equip Minoru with all sorts of weapons. While mounted, press X near any weapon and choose left hand, right hand, or back. I grab the spike ball for the left hand, flame emitter for the right hand, and a metal board for the back. Proceed to battle your way through hordes of enemies as you walk towards the pulsating yellow pin. Keep in mind that every action and every step that you take will drain your Zonai charge, so it may be wiser to dismount and attack while you reload your battery. Minoru can walk on the gloom without consequence, so don't let those paths slow you down. After battling against many hordes of enemies, you'll make your way to the Spirit Temple, home of the boss showdown against a seized construct. This boss battle is very hard if you haven't gotten the hang of battling with Minoru. Take the two spike balls and attach them to your left and right hands, as those will be the main weapons in battle. Your goal is to block any attacks coming your way with the ZR button, and then dishing out left and right hooks in order to push the seized construct towards the explosive ropes. Afterwards, he'll jump away and fire cannon shots at you, so sidestep those as you make your way back to land more hits on him. Continue hitting it until it reaches 50% health for phase 2. The next phase is a little harder due to the fact that the seized construct has all the available weapons to attack you with, so try to stay as close to underneath it as you can so you don't get hit by the cannon blast. It'll eventually run out of ammo and land on the ground, which will be your perfect chance to punch him into the ropes. Be patient and aim your punches and proceed to knock his HP down to zero and watch him blow up. Take your heart piece and continue your adventures. Congratulations. And there you have it, the entire Spirit Temple and Minoru. Oh my gosh, was that awesome. I think Link being on some sort of mech and firing lasers and flame emitters and cannons and a giant spike ball is actually pretty cool. It's very cumbersome and I did actually get a lot of game overs on my way over to the Spirit Temple. So, I don't know, I'm not really a big fan of it actually using battery power while walking, but anyway, maybe they'll patch it out, who knows. I hope that you guys have really had a fun time with this one. I thought it was actually pretty fun. Alright, anyway, let me know what you guys thought of the final boss battle below in the comments, and like I said earlier, thank you so much for enjoying these guides. I'm working really hard behind the scenes, getting them all scripted out and narrated for you, so I really hope it helps out. Anyway, help me out by smashing that like button, sharing the video with another 
Zelda fan, and of course, subscribing for even more Tears of the Kingdom. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.